Transportation Safety Board officials are headed to St. Martin to figure out what caused a frightening hard landing on a WestJet flight from Toronto. A picturesque landing over a famous beach in St. Martin. But as this WestJet flight lands, it hit the runway hard. We almost lost our lives. There was a hard landing in St. Martin this weekend, a very hard landing, and we need to take a look at it. Let's watch. Here he comes. Oof. All right, let me stop it right there. This is WestJet. They're on their way from Toronto down to St. Martin, full of passengers waiting for their uh, vacation on the island. And uh, I would be very excited if I was going to St. Martin. And uh, they get all the way there. And then right at the very bottom, when the airplane touches down, the right landing gear collapses. Uh, there was It was quite a violent collision with the runway. Uh, we're gonna have to wait for the preliminary report to come out to find out exactly how many Gs this landing was, but I can tell you it was enough to blow the tire and to drive the strut up through the top of the wing. I'll show you a picture here in just a couple minutes of what that looks like. You can see the airplanes kind of listing off to the right side. Uh, the pilots obviously know that they've got a problem at this point. They do a really great job of keeping this airplane straight down the runway and bringing it to a stop. And then the calamity starts after that. So let's watch how well they do keeping this thing on the runway. Now, we see all the smoke uh, it, because of the perspective of this video. Uh, they did such a good job keeping this thing straight on the runway. The controller in the tower doesn't even know that there's a problem yet. Uh, now, the, 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 the problem is going to unwrap right in front of her but she's giving them the normal taxi instructions to get off the runway, so she doesn't know that they've driven that strut up through the wing. Let's see how it turns out here. All right, that's the pilot. Yeah, he doesn't really know what to say. So I'm going to take another look at this a little bit closer in. Uh, we're going to stop right at the moment of uh, collision. I'm going to show you a, another perspective that a passenger took out the window. I think it was honestly the emergency exit window. Um, there's a video of something that probably contributed to this. And then I'll talk about the factors that would cause uh, a hard landing like this. It's a little closer view. Looks like a normal approach, normal glide slope. Everything looks normal at this point. Uh, they're coming in. It looks like they got the proper speed. Maybe, maybe not. Let's stop it right there. There's a little dip of the wing to the left. The winds were 10 to 12 knots, slightly off the right side of the aircraft. So, uh, you, you, you know, if it's eh, 10 knots, it's not that big a deal. Maybe you put a little bit of rudder in, not much uh, for a landing like this. It's pretty much going to be a, a routine landing, most more or less right down the runway. Now, every once in a while at the bottom, especially in a hotter climate like this, you might get some thermal or you might get a, a, a gust of wind uh, that causes you to make a last minute adjustment. One of the things you don't want to do when you're in the flare or right at the bottom is use too much aileron. And aileron is when I turn the yoke to the left or the right. I'm trying to turn the airplane to the left or the right. If I'm at 200 feet, 300 feet, I can use my aileron, no problem. I want to get lined up with that runway. I'm going to coordinate that with a little bit of rudder because the rudder is going to bring the nose around. Right when you get into the flare, about this point in the landing, you kind of want to lay off the aileron and just use primarily rudder, but very, very sparingly at the bottom. But something takes place here. Let's watch the touchdown now. They come down and right there, boom, they hit. And you can see that they hit real hard on the right main mount first. And you can see that the airplane is tilted off to the right. That happened all at the last second. You can see on the left wing of the airplane from this perspective that the left ailer, the, the spoiler is about to deploy. The spoilers come up on the top of the wing. So as soon as the, the airplane senses that there's weight on wheels, those spoilers are already armed to come up. That's going to make the more of the weight of the airplane come down. That's normal in this landing. I'm going to show you the perspective here in a minute of that aileron that came up, not the spoiler, but the aileron that I think kind of contributed uh, to the uh, the hardness of this landing. 
Nose comes over real hard. And you can see you now close up here. Let me stop it right there. You can see that, that the right side, that that engine is really, I think the engine's almost scraping against the ground. So that, that right strut has completely compressed. It has stayed compressed. And in fact, I'm gonna show you a picture here in just a second. It's gone all the way up through the top of the wing. All right. He does a nice job probably with the opposite brake and maybe some nose wheel steering to keep the airplane pointed right straight down the runway. That's very important in a situation like this. All right, he comes to a full stop. And again, you know, they didn't know that there was a problem until he uh, told them that there was an issue with this. And now a quick word from our sponsor. When the Polish F-16 went down during an air show, the reporting came fast and from every angle. Some stories focused on the pilot, others on military presence in Eastern Europe, and a few just leaned into the drama. All right, to make sense of it all, we turned to today's sponsor, Ground News. It's a news comparison platform that gathers stories from thousands of sources and helps you break out of echo chambers and actually see the full picture. In just seconds, you can compare how different outlets cover the same story and check their political bias, making the news less overwhelming and a lot clearer. With the F-16 crash, Ground News showed 46 sources in total, 33% from the left, 41 from the right, and the rest center aligned, with most being highly factual. And their location of coverage tool revealed something we'd missed otherwise. Most of the coverage is out of the United Kingdom, with Polish and German sources offering deeper context and reporting closer to the location of the crash. On this channel, we don't just want the loudest version of the news, we want the clearest. Ground News helps us get there. Right now, you can get 40% off the Vantage plan. Just scan the QR code or click the link in the description below. Big thanks to Ground News for sponsoring this video and helping us bring better stories to you on this channel. Sponsors like this help us to bring more content to you. Let's take a look now at this video. This was taken by a passenger looking out the window and at that critical right wing, because this is real important. And I'm gonna stop it here in just a second and show you what I think contributed to the severity of this touchdown. Coming over the beach line, lined up on the runway, everything looks fine. I'm gonna stop the video right here. You see right there, the aileron comes up at the very trailing edge of the wing. There is an, the, the aileron, which turns the airplane left or right, comes up at the last minute. Now this airplane's already in the flare. They're a couple of feet above the ground, maybe. It could have been because of a last minute wind gust that the pilot was adjusting. Uh, it didn't help. So here, what would cause a hard landing like this? There's a number of things that could be the, the case. There could have been something wrong with that strut and it could have been, you know, high time on that strut and it just been used a lot and it was kind of ready to collapse. That's probably not the main issue here. Uh, the hardness of the landing, but most pilots come into what we call the flare and as they get down to about 10 feet above the ground, they'll lift up the nose of the airplane and they'll ease those back wheels onto the ground so that it doesn't have that hard impact. Um, I didn't see a lot of a flare here. I think there was a little bit of one. It also could have to do with airspeed. Uh, airspeed is real important and if you bleed off too much airspeed, you get slow, you'll get that little sinker at the bottom. Now, uh, we had a video here uh, back in the beginning of the year that showed that uh, Delta flight up in Toronto that had kind of what I'm going to call a controlled crash. The one where the right wing came off and the airplane turned over, everybody survived and walked away from it, but there was a big fireball behind that. What's the difference between an incident like that and an incident like this? Well, I'm going to call this a hard landing, a super hard landing. I'm going to call that other one a controlled crash. The difference was, as we looked at the uh, the data that came out after that crash, they had pulled the power back at 140 feet and never pushed the power back up. Having done that, they created a situation where they were going to get a sinker and a big one. They should have pushed the power back up 30, 40, 50, 60 feet above the ground uh, to arrest that rate of descent. They would have had a firm landing, but they wouldn't have had the, the controlled crash that they had. This is a little bit different. I believe that they had power on coming into the landing. Now, we don't know what the airspeed is going to be. When the preliminary report comes out in a month, we'll know a couple things. The G factors uh, that were how hard they hit. We'll also know, you know how much aileron was put in. Uh, and we'll also know what the airspeed was. The one thing we won't know is where the air the pilot 
at the controls was looking. Now, why is that important? Well, you can do what's called spotting the deck. And if you spot the deck, you're looking right over the nose of the airplane, straight down at the runway. If you spot the deck, you will tend to have more firm landings. Why? Because you're not using your peripheral vision. You don't see the ground coming up in the, in the side of your eyes and you don't have that relative motion and you just kind of drive the airplane into the ground. Most pilots will flare not only on the audible uh, warning, which most of these airplanes, I think the 737 is no different, will tell you from 50 feet down every 10 feet of increments. It's an audible voice that says 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Right around 20 to 10, I start my flare, but I'm also looking all the way down the runway. And the important importance of that is that I get that peripheral vision working for me so I can hold the airplane off enough to have a nice smooth landing rather than kind of driving it in. I was flying with a, a co-pilot, um, well, I was a brand new captain, and uh, I was flying with a guy, we were down in Miami, and uh, he was coming in and I, I, I kind of felt kind of funny, but uh, we were kind of aggressively coming towards the ground at the end and out of the corner of my eye I looked and I saw him staring straight down and it was too late I kind of grabbed the yoke a little bit we had a firm landing now not this firm right we had a couple of the the overhead bins open in the back that's a pretty firm landing um, but this one could have been that could have been the airspeed was a little slow could have been the pilot was spotting in the deck that aileron that you see right there is not helping uh, at all and it's going to force that right main mount down even harder let me continue with this perspective and then we'll go on from there you can hear right there. Boom. There it is. All right. So hard that everybody in the back goes, oh, and this guy taking the video, he loses control of his phone. All right. That's a pretty hard landing. So let me uh, show you this one just one more time because it's real short. And I'll show you exactly where the aileron input drove that right main mount into the ground. Here it comes. There's one aileron there, but that's not the one. This is the one, boom, right there. That's pretty hard. You can hear the reaction of the passengers in the back. Let me show you a picture, all right, of what this looks like. And there it is on your screen. All right, this is a photo taken after the fact. And you can see the top of the wing is totally destroyed. Why? Because that right main mount strut has come all the way up through the top of the wing. Um, and again, those struts are designed to absorb a lot of shock, this much shock, no. And so I think this airplane is probably a total loss. I'd be surprised if they could repair this airplane and get it back into service. Uh, so much so that I reached out to, to a couple of different uh, services yesterday, and we're going to try to put together a, an interview with these guys. But did you ever wonder what happens to an airplane after it has a, an accident like this? I mean, obviously they have to get that off the runway, so it, it's not going to be easy to do that. And then they can't just leave the airplane in St. Martin forever. There are actual salvage services that fly in and they've got all the equipment. They will take that airplane apart. They will put it on a barge. They'll take it out to a ship. They will ship it someplace. And some of them, almost like your insurance company, they actually buy the airplane. And if they can repair it and put it back into service and sell it, that's one way that they make money. The other is they just work on behalf of the airline or the FAA or whatever facility to get that airplane out of there. And then they'll parted out. They sell the parts and so forth, and then they get paid for their services for the removal. But I think it, I don't know the first thing about how they do what they do, um, but I've always been fascinated at the idea of what do they do with these airplanes after an accident? We're going to try to set up an interview and talk about that. So uh, just be looking out for that in the future. So all in all, everybody walks away from this. Uh, what contributed to this? Well, it could have been slow airspeed. It could have been that aileron input at the last minute. It could have been spotting the deck. It could have been a number of things. Uh, after the fact, the crew did a nice job of keeping it straight down the runway. The firefighting crews obviously came and did a nice job of containing any secondary issues that might have happened here. But I thought you wanted to see this because this was really kind of a calamity on what was a lot of people's vacation. Uh, and it got really rudely interrupted at the last minute. So dress for success on an airplane, my friends. Remember, you may not know until the very last second if you got to go down one of those slides. Make sure you're prepared for that moment ahead of time. This one had a really good outcome. Well, now you know. I'm Captain Steve. Fly safe. So as a reminder, we're still in the middle of our Make-A-Wish donation campaign. We're going to run that all the way through the end of the month of September. So if you can, click the link in the screen below and make a generous donation, if you can, to a great, great organization. That's Make-A-Wish.